Hey there, this is Father Joel Peart from the parish of Brunswick in Brunswick East. Now it happens sometimes after a Good Friday service that one or two of the people of God with the best of intentions will come up and say to me, thank you, Father, for a beautiful Mass. Now it's great that these people want to encourage those that lead them in prayer, but on Good Friday, no Mass is celebrated. In fact, no sacraments are to be celebrated at all on this day. The sacraments are given their power from Jesus Christ, and on the day that he falls silent, so too the church falls silent. Sadly, this year we aren't able to gather as a people of God for this sacred liturgy. But what this liturgy celebrates especially, you can celebrate at home. Firstly, the reading of the Passion Narrative. As you might recall, the reading of this gospel is a little different than most and the people of God play a more active role. What's more interesting is that the roles they play are ones that you probably wouldn't choose if you had the option. Now the role of the Sanhedrin who organise and arrange for the execution of Jesus. They are of the woman standing by the fire who tries to undermine St Peter, get him caught out. And most strikingly, they are of the crowd who, when Pilate presents Jesus to them, shout, crucify him, crucify him. Now at this moment, we shouldn't think that we're simply playing the role of Jewish leaders and people of 2,000 years ago. No, the reality goes much deeper and it's much more personal than that. We call for the death of Jesus because of our sins. And this leads me to speak of the second part of the liturgy, which is the veneration of the Holy Cross. The priest goes to the back of the church and as he processes in, he slowly unveils Christ on the cross. And bit by bit, we see what our sins have done. They have crucified our loving Saviour. And this reality should bring us to a place of sorrow and grief. Sorrow for sins is a grace from God. It's actually necessary for us to be forgiven by him to receive his mercy. But what's greater than our sorrow is the love that God has for us. God loved the world so much that he sent his only begotten son that anyone who believes in him might have eternal life. And so as we're presented with this cross, we approach and then we bow down and we venerate. We show our thanks for what Christ has done for us and for how much he loves us. And that gives us a strength and a hope and a peace that nothing else can give, that he has taken our sins upon himself and offer them to the Father to have us redeemed, to win our salvation. At the end of that passion narrative, we hear of how our Lord is taken down from the cross and laid in the tomb. The stone is rolled over and produces an unimaginable darkness. Now, throughout our life, we experience darkness hardship, suffering. But know that there's nothing that we can suffer that Christ hasn't suffered himself. He is there with us. So on this day, we make the effort to spiritually go into that tomb with him, to be there, to sit there in the stillness, in the darkness, and wait with patient hope and trust We're about to see just how powerful the saving power of God is. Even who
Separate me now. 